Next question over here. Hi, yes. My name is Patrick. I'm a student at Centennial College. My question is, in Islam it says, Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, is not the Son of God. When we are all children of Allah and born of mother and father, for he is only born of a mother, why is he not the Son of God? But the Patrick asked a very good question, a very important question. He said that why in Islam is Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, not considered a son of God? When we all are children of God, he being born of a virgin woman, all the more reason should be. See, brother, if you tell we are children of God, in that way I've got no problem at all. If you read the biblical language, if you say that we are children of God, and Jesus is son of God in that context, meaning he is person who follows the commandment of God, most verily, all the messengers of God, they are sons of God. But the problem is, if someone says he is not a normal son, but he is the begotten son, then there's a problem. Because if you read the Bible, the Bible have got sons, the God has got sons by the tons. If you read the Bible, Adam is son of God, Ephraim is son of God, Israel is son of God. It's mentioned in the book of Romans, chapter number 8. All those who are led by the Spirit of God, they are sons of God. That means if you follow the commandment of God, you're a son of God. I've got no problem with that phrase at all. But today, that phrase has been misunderstood. You know, for example, if a young son asked me a question, I said, Beta, son, it's a very good question. He won't mind because I'm elderly, you know. But if I say that begotten son, that means I'm insinuating him. You know, maybe he'll punch me. Fine. So what do you realize? That using the phrase son of God in the context that we are children of God, we have no problem. So in that context, all the human beings who follow the commandments of God can be called children of God. No problem. But what the Christian says? That no, no, no. Jesus Christ, peace, but it's not a normal son. And he quotes Gospel of John, chapter number 3, verse number 16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, whosoever believeth in him shall not die but have everlasting life. Correct, brother? So do you believe Jesus is the begotten son of God? I do. You believe? Fine. Now this verse which I quoted, Gospel of John, chapter number 3, verse number 16, it's from King James Version. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, whosoever believeth in him shall not die but have everlasting life. Now when you read the Revised Standard Version of the Bible, revised by Thaidu scholars, Christian scholars of the highest eminence, backed by 50 different cooperating Christian denominations, they say that this word begotten is an interpolation, it's a fabrication, it's a concoction, it's an adulteration. Who's saying? Not Muslims, not Hindus. Thaidu Christian scholars of the highest eminence in the revised standard version of the Bible, they say begotten is an interpolation. It's a fabrication. It's a concoction. And they're thrown out of the Bible. So if you say Jesus is son of God, like Adam, like Ephraim, like Israel, I have no problem. The moment you say begotten, I want to ask you the question, what is the meaning of begotten? Brother, what is the meaning of begotten? You know, begetting is an animal act. It's the function of lower animals of sex. And when you say that he was born to Mother Mary, virgin, what are you insinuating? And if you say, because Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, is God, a son of God, because he was born to Mother Mary, Quran gives the reply in Surah Imran, chapter number 3, verse number 59. Inna in isa inda Allahi ka masala adam. Khalaka min turab. That when they say the similitude of Jesus in front of Allah is the same as Adam. They were born from dust and said, be and it was. If you say that Jesus Christ is God because he had no father and only mother, then Adam, peace be upon him, is a greater God. He had no mother and no father according to the Bible. <laughs> Mashallah, you're clapping. I like it. So if you say Jesus is God because he had no father, only mother, Adam is a greater God, peace be upon him. He had no mother, he had no father. I never referred to him as a God, but son of God. That's right. Fine. So Adam is a bigger son of God. <laughs> right or wrong? 
By your definition, Adam would be a god, for he has no mother nor no father. Not my definition, not my definition. By the definition of the Christian missionary, by my definition, he is a messenger of God. Because God cannot beget. I told you in my talk. Lam yalit wa lam yulad. He begets not knowing the begotten. The moment God begets, he is not God. Son of God meaning pious person, I agree. That's the reason Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the Quran, in 99 attributes, he has missed out ab, father. Why? It's a good attribute. But Allah did not mention ab meaning father because people started having wrong meaning of the word father. So he used the more difficult word rab, but did not use ab. Logically, it's fine. But Almighty Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala purposely did not use the attribute ab in the Quran because people will misunderstand. That's the reason English-wise, saying Jesus is the son of God, meaning messenger of God, I'm with you. But the moment you say begotten son, I have objection. So you say Jesus is a messenger of God, I say peace be upon him after his name. So I respect Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, more than you, Brother Patrick. Because when I take his name, I have to say peace be upon him. If I do not say that, I'm wrong. So I love Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, more than you. I follow his teaching more than you. And if you want, I can prove it to you. That's a different argument, not for tonight. Sorry? 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 That's a different argument and not for okay, tonight. Okay, fine. I'll, I'll give you a few things. Jesus Christ, peace be upon him. Fine? If you read the Bible, he was circumcised on the eighth day. Fine? Majority of all the Muslims are circumcised, the Christians aren't. So if you say Christian means a person who follows the teachings of Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, then it's mentioned in the book of Leviticus, chapter number 11, verse number 7 to 8. It's mentioned in the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 14, verse number 8, you should not have pork. It's mentioned in the book of Isaiah, chapter 65, verse number 2 to 5, should not have pork. Muslims don't have pork, most of the Christians have pork. If you read the book of Ephesians, chapter number 5, verse number 18, in the book of Proverbs, chapter number 20, verse number 1, it says you should not have alcohol. Muslims as a whole don't have alcohol, most of the Christians have alcohol. If you say Christian means a person who follows the teachings of Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, we Muslims are more Christian than the Christians themselves. We love him. We respect him. If you say, I love Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, but don't follow his teachings, your love is false. We, therefore, mashallah, I love Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, more than most of the Christians. Because I follow his teachings, I respect him, I revere him. And Jesus Christ also said in the Gospel of John, chapter number 16, verse number 11 to 14. I have many things to say unto you, but he cannot bear them now. For he, when the spirit of truth shall come, he shall guide you unto all truth. He was talking about Prophet Muhammad to come. So Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, said, you have to believe in the last and final messenger, Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa So even that way I'm following Jesus Christ, peace be upon him. I believe in Prophet Muhammad. Do you believe in Prophet Muhammad as the messenger of God? I do. MashaAllah. Now you're more closer to...